Reptiles are one of Earth's most diverse groups of life, boasting over 12,000 living species. They have a long history, first appearing 312 million years ago during the late Carboniferous period. For most of their existence, reptiles have dominated the Earth. This reign began with the Pseudosuchians in the early Triassic period and was followed by the dinosaurs, the most iconic reptiles, who ruled the world for an astounding 165 million years. However, the reign ended 66 million years ago when the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct, marking the beginning of the age of mammals. But this isn't entirely accurate, as another group of reptiles, less famous than the dinosaurs and Pseudosuchians, became the dominant force after the dinosaurs' demise, the Sebesidae. The Sebesidae were a family of prehistoric terrestrial crocodilomorphs, part of the Sebesusuchians, and were highly diverse and widespread, particularly in South America and Europe. They were extremely successful hunters, becoming the largest terrestrial carnivores since the Mesozoic megatheropods. However, their beginnings were humble, as evidenced by their first known member, the Ogresuchus. Initially thought to have existed solely during the Cenozoic, dating of the Ogresuchus fossils revealed it lived during the dinosaur era, around 67.7 million years ago. The Ogresuchus, discovered in the Trempe Formation of Spain, was small compared to its later relatives. Adults reached only about 1 meter or 3.6 feet in length and weighed around 9 kilograms or 20 pounds, similar to a large monitor lizard. Its small size might have been due to the high presence of carnivorous dinosaurs in its habitat, including the Pyroraptor, a highly specialized dromaeosaur. The Ogresuchus was a fully land-based predator with powerful jaws capable of cracking eggs and tearing flesh. Despite its size disadvantage, it was fast and agile, thanks to its upright long legs and reduced armor allowing it to outrun slower juvenile dinosaurs. Remarkably, the Ogresuchus or its relatives survived the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. It's speculated that their small size and possibly slow metabolism, allowing survival on minimal food, played a significant role. Their survival was pivotal as they became the last lineage of the Sebesusuchians. The lack of competition after the impact allowed them to grow rapidly in size and within 500,000 years, they had become the top predators as seen with the early Paleocene Zilmesicus in Bolivia. This croc was about three times the size of Ogresuchus, making it the largest predator in its environment. The Zilmesicus remained fully terrestrial with a rounded tail, unlike modern crocs adapted for swimming. It preyed on small mammals and amphibians, which were easy targets due to their size. Sebesids continued to thrive and grow in size, with the emergence of the Sebesis during the late Paleocene. This predator was about 3.1 meters or 10 feet long, and weighed as much as a male spectacled bear. It lived in diverse habitats across Bolivia, Argentina, Colombia, and possibly Brazil. Sebesis had a highly efficient bite force due to its deep snout, allowing it to prey on animals larger than itself. Its teeth were blade-like and well-suited for slicing through meat, similar to the teeth of large theropods. This trait made Sebesis and its relatives formidable predators. Despite their dominance, they faced competition from terror birds like the medium-sized Androsornis and Fizornis. These large, flightless birds were apex predators in their own right, and interactions between them and the Sebesids would have been fierce, with both vying for the same prey. The Sebesides golden era was during the Eocene, marked by increased mammalian size, prompting them to bulk up. The Barinosuchus, the largest member of the Sebesidae, emerged during this time, found in Venezuela, Argentina, and Peru. This giant predator weighed up to 1,720 kilograms or 3,790 pounds and was possibly 10 meters or 33 feet long. It preyed on various large mammals, including notongulates and glyptodonts. Interactions between Sebesids and mammals were complex. Early mammals like the notongulates and xenarthrans were common prey items for these crocodilomorphs. These Zilmasicus, for example, would have hunted small mammals that did not typically weigh over a kilogram or 2.2 pounds. Larger Sebesis, such as the Barinosuchus, took on more significant prey, including the one-ton Xenostrapotherium and other large herbivores. These interactions were not one-sided, as some mammals, particularly large herbivores, would have posed a threat to juvenile Sebesids. Europe also saw the rise of Sebesids, like the giant Dentaniosuchus, which lived in France and reached 5.3 meters or 17 and a half feet in length. It preyed on large parasodactyls and had competition from other crocodilians, large terrestrial birds, and hyanodonts. Hyanodonts, large predatory mammals, would have been direct competitors with Sebesids, and their interactions likely involved fierce battles for territory and food. 
the Dentania succus was armed with robust teeth and a large skull, allowing it to take down nearly every animal it lived with, including parasodactyls that weighed over two tons. However, its size advantage wouldn't help it for long, as it vanished 37 million years ago, marking the end of Sebastids in Europe. The cause behind its downfall is unknown, but it's usually attributed to climate changes that had a larger impact on reptiles than mammals. South American Sebastids fared better, with Barinosuchus surviving until 11.8 million years ago. The Langstonia, another South American Sebastid, also went extinct around the same time. Their extinctions were likely due to ecological changes in South America, exacerbated by the uplift of the Andes, leading to the decline of hoofed animals they preyed on. With the Sebesids gone, the age of mammals flourished, although terror birds remained a formidable presence for another 11 million years. Another fascinating member of the Sebesidae was Lorosuchus, which roamed Argentina during the early Paleocene. Comparable in size to Zulmesicus, Lorosuchus was around 2 to 3 meters long and adapted to a similar ecological niche preying on small mammals and amphibians. Its presence in Argentina indicates the widespread success of Sebesids in South America during this period. Interactions with mammals during the Sebesids' reign were not limited to predation. Competition for resources such as territory and prey would have been intense. For example, in South America, Sebesids competed with large predatory birds and early mammalian carnivores. These interactions shaped the ecosystems they inhabited and influenced the evolutionary paths of both reptiles and mammals. If you enjoyed learning about the Sebesidae, check out Primalia's video on terror birds. Stay curious.